The scripture reading this morning comes from John 2, uh, verses 13 to 22. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the many money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove the, all out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The word of God for the people of God. So welcome to our third Sunday in Lent. Uh, this week we will continue our sermon series on the things that we should be looking to give up during Lent and also the things that we should be committing uh, to doing during the Lenten season. Our first week we discussed our need to be honest with one another about how we are feeling so that our community of faith can help us in our time of need and... We also discussed how our community of faith needs to be committed to helping others during difficult times. Last week, we discussed how we should make sure we're doing the things that we need to do in order to ensure Jesus does not rebuke us and that we take up our crosses and follow him. Now this week, uh, in our scripture from the lectionary, we leave the book of Mark and we are now studying from the book of John. And this scripture is one that I know many people are familiar with. It's very familiar because of the vivid imagery that we get of Jesus cleansing the temple. You know, there's a, a joke about this scripture uh, that I find a little bit funny, so I'll share it with you. Uh, you know, we always ask the question, what would Jesus do, right? Whenever we're thinking about what we should be doing in our lives, well, when we think about what would Jesus do, don't forget that it's not out of the realm to make a whip out of cords and turn over tables in anger, right? But we can identify with that. We can identify with anger because as human beings, we are very able to understand the emotion of anger. In this day and age in our world, it feels as if, to me at least, Anger is almost a default emotion for a lot of people. You don't like what someone has to say? Get angry with them. You had to wait an extra two minutes in the drive-thru? Get angry. Someone wasn't driving the right speed? Get angry with them. And so on and so forth. You see, we have, uh, have seemingly lost the ability to just let small inconveniences go in our lives. Now, when we think about it truly, if you don't like what someone has to say, you don't have to agree with them. That's fine. But you also don't have to allow yourself to become angry at what they have said. Is it inconvenient to go through the drive through and get asked to pull over to the extra spot so that you have to wait for your meal? A little bit. Is it still faster than if you were to cook it yourself? Absolutely. Someone's not driving the right speed? Maybe you should be thankful that you get where you're going safely. Now, you may be saying, well, pastor, you just read to us how Jesus was angry. And since we are trying to emulate Jesus in our lives, doesn't that mean we should be allowed to get angry as well? Well, the answer to that is my favorite to give you, and I know your favorite to hear. The answer is yes and no. You see, we are allowed to be angry. However, 
We are told that we are not supposed to sin in our anger. In Ephesians 4.26 and also in Psalm 4.4, we are told, In your anger, do not sin. And when we say that, it sure seems like something that might be easy to say. Hey, you can get mad, but when you get mad, don't allow yourself to sin. It sounds easy, but in reality... I know that you all are aware that it is very hard not to allow yourself to sin when you are angry. When you get mad because of what someone said to you, do you think to yourself, what an idiot? Well, guess what? You've crossed the line into sinning. When you're waiting in the drive-thru for your dinner and you think, oh, this is ridiculous. If I was the one working in there, I would have had it out here already. I could do this so much better. Well, that is sin as well sin of pride and honestly probably a bit of a lie on top of it quite honestly so guess what sin and anger again and when someone is driving too slow or too fast do you think to yourself boy i sure hope they just drive off the road on the next corner so i can be rid of this person again guess what you've crossed from anger into sin it's very hard for us to separate our anger from that next step of sinning You know, from time to time, I have spoken about instances in my own life where I have allowed myself to sin in my anger, whether it be in an unkind word or in an impure thought. Anger is something that I have had to deal with for as long as I can remember. Uh, I do indeed have quite the temper. Now, I do thank God that as I've grown a bit older, it is not something that pops up near as much, but I can tell you that in my youth, I would lose my temper and I would literally just see red in front of my eyes. See, in those moments where I would lose my temper, it was nearly, if not impossible, for me to control what I said or what I did. At least that is how it seemed to me at the time. But what is the difference? What is the difference between Jesus becoming angry in the temple and us becoming angry with people of this world? Why does he get a pass? Does he get a pass simply because of who he was? No, that is not the difference. The difference is that Jesus and the anger of Jesus in the temple, it was a righteous anger. Now, we have made that in our world to mean that I am right because I am angry. That is not what righteous anger is. Righteous anger is an anger that is directed at the things that oppose God. Say that again for you. Righteous anger is an anger that is directed at the things that oppose God. So why then was Jesus so angry when he entered into the temple? It's because people were selling stuff, right? Well, that is what the easy answer has always been, or what the the uh, the interpretation for some denominations has always been. Uh, It is not okay to sell anything inside the church because of this scripture. As Methodists, you know that that is not how we would interpret this scripture, right? Well, in his book, What Made Jesus Mad, which is a book that we just finished in our uh, Bible study group, and one that if you would like to read it, I'm more than happy to give you the copy of that I used for the study. Uh, Tim Harlow, the author, pushes past the simple explanation of Jesus was mad because people were selling stuff in the church to give a more thoughtful interpretation of the table-throwing incident. Uh, Harlow points to this central idea, and it is this. Jesus was angry because people were standing in the way of others coming to God. The money changers and the lenders and the ones selling the animals, they were making it impossible for the poor to be able to come to the temple and afford the necessary sacrificial animals of the time. The high religious leaders of the temple were barring others from being able to come into the inner courtyards. 
See, that is why Jesus was so angry at the scene that he saw in the temple. People were making it harder for others to come and worship God. So the question that we have to ask ourselves this morning is, are we doing the same thing? Are we making it harder for people to come and know God? Well, I know our reaction is, oh no, pastor, we would never do that, right? We would never do that on purpose. If you think about it, that is the exact opposite of what we want, right? The exact opposite of what we want as a community of faith. We want to grow, not shrink. We want to bring more people into the family of God, not drive others out. And yet sometimes we do indeed make it harder for people to come to know Jesus. And sometimes it's because of the sin that we have allowed ourselves to commit in our anger. That person that you yelled at because your food was wrong when it came to your table, go back to them and try to tell them about Jesus. The guy that you honked at and tailgated and flashed your high beams at because they cut you off in traffic, follow them home and then try to tell them about Jesus. That person in your life that told you told you never want to see again because of what they said to you, go and try and tell them about Jesus. You see, it is in our anger that we often commit sin, and that sin that made Jesus most angry, and it is stopping others from coming to know God. Now, I want you to know that I know this is not easy. I know there are so many things going on in our world today that make us angry. I know there are so many things that we experience that make us wonder if it is possible to go a single day without reacting in anger. I know that none of that is easy, but here's the thing no one ever said following Jesus was going to be easy. However, if we want to do, if we want to do that and we want to follow the path that he has called us to follow, we have to work on those things that cause us to sin. Now, you may have been wondering, why would he call this sermon Rise and Shine if all he's going to do is talk about our anger? Well, I think it is this, the reason is this, and, and I say, uh, I think we... And I say we because I am in need of this too. I think we can all use a wake-up call when it comes to how our anger can stop others from coming to God. So in this Lenten season, if, we, if I can encourage you to give up just one thing this year during Lent, I encourage you to give up anger. Let the anger that you've carried in your heart go. Let the instances of anger that come into your life on a daily basis slide right past you. And then do what you can to help others come to God. See how much better you will feel if you bring someone to Christ through your kindness than you will if you drive them away in anger. My challenge for you this week, it is a tough one. Do not let yourself sin in anger this week. Amen.